Okay, so here we are with another video. In this video, we're probably going to go into functions in Rust. And if you haven't seen the other video about variables, you probably want to check that one out. There's a link in the description or there's probably something popping up somewhere over here. And then, yeah, you can go and, and check that one out first. Okay, so let's dive right into our Rustlings tutorial. So I'm back in my Rustlings project and I'm going to run Rustlings watch. What's nice, it actually shows us that all the variable exercises are properly um, compiling. So um, all I need to do now is go back to the variable six file and remove the I'm not done comment. So I'm going to do that really quick and exercises variables and then variables number six. Going to remove this comment right here and then save the file. And then we can see it continues with the next exercise, which is about functions. So in functions one dot RS, it says it cannot find a function call me in this scope. Let's take a look at the file and I head over to exercises, functions, functions one, right. And here we can see that we have our main function, which calls a function call me. And obviously it doesn't exist right here. So I assume our job is to create it now. So I'm going to create a function call me. And I just leave it empty for now and see if that's going to make it compile. Okay, wonderful. Next step is again, removing the I'm not done comment. And then we uh, continue with the next one. In this exercise, it says, oh, okay. So here we actually have a little bit of a syntax error. We see here that there's a function call me, which takes a number, but we don't actually know the type at this point. So we need to, we need to fix that. I'm just going to ask for a hint as well. Here it says Rust requires that all parts of a function signature have type annotations, but call me is missing the type type annotation for num. Okay, that's pretty much what I said. So let's head over to the functions to file, right? There's a function call me and it has a num parameter. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a type of i32 this time, save the file and wonderful, it's compiling. We can go ahead and remove the comment here, save the file and see what else is going on. Okay, so in functions 3.rs, we get an error that this function takes one argument, but zero arguments were supplied. So let's open up the file. Okay, we have again our main function which calls call me and call me has a dedicated type and uh, let's see what's going on here. Oh, right. Ha, man. Yeah, of course. Now we have our function call me and we call it but we don't actually give it the parameter that it expects. So let's just give it a number in this case five and see what happens. Wonderful. It outputs ring call number one, two, three, four, five. Cool. I'm gonna remove the comment again and see what Rustlings has to offer now. Okay, the next compilation error in functions four. Open up the file. I'm gonna go right back. So here we see that there is in line 14 an expected type. Apparently, sales price is returning a value, but it's not really annotated in the function signature. So we need to fix that. Uh, let's take a look at this file and uh, see if that's true. So here's the function sale price. It takes a price, checks whether it's even, and then it returns a price as well. We need to say that it also returns an i32 in this case. Let's save the file and see what happens. Yep. That that is compiling. Um, we can still ask for a hint to see what Rustlings has to say. So it says the error message points to line 14 and says it expects a type after the error symbol. This is where functions return type should be. So take a look at the is even function for an example. So that's pretty much what we've done and probably I should have asked for the hint before, right? Well, next time. So functions 5.rs, we have another compilation error. This time we have a function square and it says it's returning an i32, but it seems to return a unit type. This is what this thing is called. There's also a little hint here from the compiler that says implicitly returns unit type as its body has no tail or return expression. Okay, so in other words, it's telling us that this function doesn't seem to return anything. And that's why Rust returns by default the type unit type, which is expressed in these two parentheses. Now let's ask for a hint really quick to see if this is kind of the right direction. Okay, so here we see this is really a common error that can be fixed by removing one character. It happens because Rust distinguishes between expressions and statements. Expressions return a value based on its operand and statements simply return a unit type which behaves just like void in C and C++. We want to return a value of i32 type from the square function but it's returning a unit type. They're not the same. There are two solutions. We either add a return ahead of the num times num statement 
or we remove the semicolon and make it implicitly return the type of the expression. So let's head over to the functions five file. And here we can see that we have our function square, which returns an I32 type. And here we can see that we have the statement with the semicolon. And to make this work, we need to add a return keyword here. When we save this, we'll see that it compiles. Another way to do this, and this is probably the more common way to do it, is to leave the uh, return statements out and also remove the semicolon, because the last statement uh, in a function like this is going to be implicitly returned. So this is going to have the exact same effect. So yeah, here we see the program is compiling perfectly. Okay, removing the comment, saving the file, and moving on. And that's already for functions in the Rustlings tutorial. Thanks for watching.